Marcus, thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, tell me why you've written the letter that you've written, how important it is to you. Um, it obviously has a huge importance for me, um, probably on a personal level because um, you know what families are going through now, I once had to go through that um, same system and it's very difficult to, to find a way out but um, now that I'm in this position that I'm in, it's, it's very important for me to, to help the people that are struggling and um, that was the main reason why the letter was, was written and um, you know whether the, the outcome is that it doesn't change or it does change. Um, I know that I've done the right thing in, in trying to help help these people. So, Take me back to that time that you talk about in the letter. Yeah. How difficult were things for you as a kid when you needed free school meals? Yeah, well, you know, my mum was a, a single parent. She's got five kids that was all living in the same house. Now, the programme that I started at 11 years old, you, you, you're supposed to start it at 12 years old, which basically gives you uh, a new accommodation, um, closer to the training facilities and, and a new school and she worked that hard to push it forward because she knew that for me that was the step I needed to take. I needed to be eating the, the right foods whilst I was growing and I needed to be close to my teammates, my my new school, my new school friends and stuff like that so um, you know she made that decision when I was 11 years old um, and United allowed it so that was the reason why I ended up going at a younger age compared to the others. Um, it was to help my mum with her situation and also get me out of the situation that, that we was in. So there's, al there's always a big element of, of sacrifice to, to try and get to the top level. And, you know, that's, that's the one that we had, to, we had to make initially. You know, my mum, she'd done, she done the best she could. I remember we used to go to a shop called um, Pound World and everything was under a pound. And, you know, we sort of schedule out the week. So we'd get seven yogurts and you can have one yogurt a day. and and so on, so she she done the best she could within the circumstances, but there's some families out there like me that have four or five kids, so it's literally impossible for, for her to, to, to take control of the situation. You know, that this is all going on at a time where kids should be concentrating on schoolwork and and stuff like that, and it's just crazy to think that this, this is still going on at this, you know, we're in 2020 now, and it's just something that I don't believe should be should be happening. We mentioned this at the beginning of, of um, COVID-19 and um, you know the problems that we were facing then compared to the problems that we're going to face after, um, which we're sort of getting to now. The, one, the problems after, um, you know, the, it's going to be massive consequences of, of the virus. So, When you're thinking about your own childhood, growing up in Withenshaw, actually things could have been really different for you, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, 45% of, of people like me, um, black people, people in different ethnic minorities, um, you know, they're living in poverty and, um, you know, I was, I was very close to, to being one of that 45%, so I understand that it could have went either way for me and, you know, I'm grateful that it went this way for me, but it doesn't make me forget about what happened in the past and, you know, I obviously want to help them people and as much as I can and, just raise awareness really because I, I think some peop people want to help um, I definitely think that people want to help but they don't have the understanding or the knowledge behind it and they don't know how many people it's actually actually affecting. Something I, I wonder when I when I read the letter when you were growing up do you remember being hungry? Yeah of course um, but I also understood um, maybe it was just part of me growing up, I, I, I just knew how hard that my mum was working. Anyway, so, you know, I'd never moan, I'd never do anything. If there's food on the table, there's food on the table. If there's not, I, I had friends that understood my same situation and maybe it was possible for me to go to their house, get some food or whatever. I know that you've written this letter from the heart. Tell me what you hope you might be able to achieve. Well, basically, I'm just hoping that the government make a, make a U-turn on on the decision to, to stop the free free meal vouchers and and I'm just hoping they do it as soon as possible really. I know they've they've mentioned that they usually do this um, you know this time of year, summer holidays, but because of because of COVID the situation's been completely different for, for everyone in the world. So um, you know circumstances change. So I think, you know, for at least summer holidays they have to be in a being be willing to, to make that decision to, to go back on themselves.
When you look at what's been happening in the country over the last several weeks, particularly the scenes of protests over the weekend, as a young black man with a platform that you have, already using it for good, um, what can you do? Can you do anything? What message can you send? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, you, ha you have to do something, um, especially if, if, like you say, I'm a young black person that um, was in struggling in the system, but managed to find a way, a way out and, you know, help my family. But now that I've done that, it's about helping the families that need you, that need you most. So um, I think it's important to, to have a voice. It's one thing thinking about it and, you know, writing them down in your house. But if you don't get that message out to the people um, and to the people higher up that can possibly change the way things are going, then you know there's there's no point having them them thoughts um, whilst you're sat in your house. So it's important that you you think about it and and then you push them messages out to to the public and also to the right people.